will first discuss um, you can install python by this um, like, um, url python.org and also very good documentation is available on this website i will side by side show you the practical example also you can run the terminal and just type python so this is the python interpreter it is a interpreter language so it normal mathematical operations you can directly perform like any operation and it will give the results okay and you can exit the prompt by control d now you can also write files as you write in c like dot c extension for python it is dot py extension and to make any file uh, like normally if you will take example okay so this is a file just run this file by python and then file dot the file which you have to execute okay so it will show you the output also if you want to execute it like a executable file like how you execute the shell script so then you have to add this line that is hash um, so it will provide um, the exe file for python in linux the executable file Okay, so we'll take a basic code um, now, and we will we'll understand it. So I just wrote five, uh, six lines, and we'll understand it line by line. So for comment in Python, it starts by hash. So anything followed by hash is the comment. And then again, to dec um, like you have to assign a string. If you take first line x, thirty four minus twenty three. So it's a it calculates a value and it will assign the value to x. And uh, in Python, you don't have to declare the variables. It is dynamically typed. Okay. For uh, assigning the string, you can um, type a string by either in double quotes or in single quotes. The meaning is same. Uh, for float value, just uh, decimal is required, as you all know. And now, double equal to is the comparator, uh, comparison operator, and the single equal to is the assignment operator. And plus, it, uh, is doing the concatenation. Uh, if both are the strings, then it will do concatenation. Otherwise, it will add the operands. And to display the value on the prompt, uh, you uh, the command is the print command. If I write here. now, uh, as you can see, I wrote print x and print y so it um, printed the values on the different lines now if i want on the same line then you have to give comma okay so it will just add a space after that and when i first wrote the, my first line was x equal to 34 minus 23 so i didn't declare what is x it is integer or anything so Whenever I um, assign a variable, assign anything to a variable, in the first assignment it is declared. Okay. And then in the further assignments, the reference will be changed. Because it, Python treats every variable as an object. So it will assign different references to the object. And suppose if you write um, any division operator like z equals to 5 divided by 2, then it won't take the float value by default it will consider it as integer okay. and for float you have to assign it separately and as i told for strings um, you can specify in double equ uh, double quotes or single quotes and if you want to assign um, multi line strings then triple quotes 
and in the multi line strings you can write if you have in a in your string any double quotes or single quotes then it will take in python one more thing is very important like in c language we have braces if we write any for loop then we start the brace then we write the function or the loop and then we close the brace so in python the indentation is very important if i write if x equal to equal to 3 then it will give error so it is saying an expected and indented block so to specify that this print statement or any spa statement is inside the if loop you have to give a space or a tab so anything um, like how it knows that print y is outside the if block again the indentation should be maintained if you are um putting one tab for this print text then if you print uh, put two tabs then it it will give error okay so you must take care of the indentation uh, like for the if if loop i wrote the colon normally we have braces so if there is any colon that it means that new block has to be started so in new block mean you have to put either tab or a white space to specify that that particular block is inside that um, block okay. now what happens when we assign a variable any value uh, it only creates a reference because the uh, first when first assignment is made it will allocate the memory like if i write x equal to 3 so what it will do it will uh, create the memory it will store the integer 3 and create a reference and x and that reference will contain the link to the integer value store uh, 3 and also uh, garbage collection like java it also um, handles it uh, automatically first assignment is very necessary like if you have not declared any uh, uh, if you have not assigned a variable once also then obviously you can't use it and multiple assignments like x comma y equal to 2 comma 3 then it, the first variable will be assigned to the first value um, you can put any name except it should not start with a number and some reserved keywords are there you learn about them as i go on some data types in python now um normally like in c we have in python also integer float um except strings etc now some additional data types there are tuples string uh, list strings are of course there but some modifications are there in strings now a tuple is an immutable data type i'll i'll explain uh, how it is immutable the difference between tuples and list is tuple is immutable and list is mutable and some syntax difference are there otherwise um in list you can store like it can be of mixed uh, data types the first element can be of integer type the second can be of string type Uh, the list may contain a element as a list data type also or a tuple data type or string and strings of course you know which we write in double quotes uh, and they are immutable explain about the in immutable so tuple is defined by the um the small parenthesis okay so the elements can be specified by comma like 23 comma some other <laughs> element etc so if you see that um this 2 comma 3 is a tuple so a tuple may contain a tuple also as an element or any other data type as an element it may contain a list also similarly a list it is um, de defined by the square brackets and it may also contain any data type and strings of course you can declare by the double quotes single quotes and in case of multiple line you can declare by the triple quotes so if you want to access any element of the suppose i declare um, suppose i declare a tuple
Pardon? Uh, now if you if i want to access any element it starts uh, from left side it starts from zero you can ac also access from the right side and it starts with minus 1 so you can access both ways also um, like if i want to print whole uh, uh, tuple then either you can just write t matlab the name of the tuple or um, a colon sorry so it will display whole tuple um, also if i want that i should write the tuple from second character uh, second element to the last second last element then to to minus two. second so yeah when you write like this then the big um, the number with which is before the colon it starts from that number and the number after the colon it um, it doesn't go for that number it uh, just before that element okay so just remember that also like if you want to write till the second last element so it will start from the beginning and till the second last element the same is applicable for the right side so you can start from second element till the end it's because it's starting from zero so you should write one the same is applicable for list also and for strings also now you can also check um, if some element is present in the tuple or list etc or is not so i can check if 3 in t so 3 is present in t if not then it will say false you must be getting it's very flexible language till now and we'll use in keyword in for loops etc also which we'll see later how to use it okay and plus uh, like we used for concatenation of strings can be also used for concatenation of tuples and lists okay. and if we write like a tuple star 3 then it will repeat the tuple three times and same for the uh, strings and list the uh, concepts in list tuple and strings are similar except that uh, tuple and string are immutable and list is mutable okay so what is mutability now if like i have declared a tuple here if i want to change the second element that is t of 1 to suppose 6 then it gives error that the tuple object does not support item assignment that is it is immutable like but if i declare a list and if i want to assign something to the element then it is allowed yeah and some other operations that are performed that is append operation if i want to add anything to the end of the list um any you can append any data type element okay so it also you can insert at any particular position by the insert command suppose at the second location also um semicolon is not required in python okay 
now we have two methods for adding something at the end of the list that is extend and the append method in append uh, if i want to add two elements then i can't because it only accepts one argument but in extend i can add by the syntax um, yeah so we in append we can only add the immutable elements because whatever we add will be considered as one element in the tuple or uh, list in append now if i want i can change again any element like which i recently added Uh, some other functions are there like index. You can find index of any element. You can count the number of occurrence of some element, and you can remove. And you can reverse the list by the dot reverse function, and the sort built-in function is available. That is the sort function. Okay. and also a tuple can be converted to list and list can be converted to tuple there are functions list and tuple so in python it's uh, many libraries are provided you can just add the libraries use the functions so now as i said that it is object oriented and it creates references to the uh, value which we have assigned so uh, how does it work we'll see suppose i declare a variable then i assign the reference to some other variable so at when i write a equal to 3 then what exactly will happen first um, the integer 3 will be created it will be stored in a memory now the reference x will be created the address will be of the memory allocated will be stored in the reference x so that now x is referencing to the memory 3 now when i write b equal to a then what will happen it will copy just the same address value in b also so if i change now 3 what will happen like the memory which is it, it which it is referencing if i change it uh, like in the in the case of list i append something then if i print it will uh, print the same value i mean b and a will print the same value because they are referencing to the same memory locations uh, however uh, if i uh, instead of a list which is a mutable data type if i write a immutable data type like a integer value and then if i change the integer value then what will happen okay, first we'll understand it here what happens when we assign it again the memory location is again a, a new memory location is assigned for the new variable like first if i assign x equal to 3 here then i incremented x so the incremented value will be stored at the new uh, memory location and then the new reference will be provided to the x variable so the previous memory re reference will be lost and if you have assigned some value to the y um, if we would have written here x y equal to x then y would be still um, referencing to the previous memory location 3 so y will print 3 but x will print 4 even if you have changed it so this is the case in the mutable data types and if if you not assign y anything to the that memory location then it will be uh, used for the garbage collection and the same concept uh, is explained with the list now a very important data type that is dictionaries it is a mapped data type so it stores keys is is to the value and it is declared by the curly braces it's something like and the elements are separated by the comma again it can be of mixed data types both keys and values i'll try giving a list uh, here
Now, the keys uh, should be only of the mutable data types. So you can't type a list in place of keys. It should be like only tuple, strings. But values are flexible. You can write immutable also here. Um, now, there are several operations you can perform on dictionaries. So if you write B and in bracket, if you write any key value, then it will give the value of that key which we have stored in the dictionary. And if the value is not present, then it will give an error. Uh, you can also assign a different value to a particular key by just assignment operator. But the keys must be unique because the values are identified by the keys. It is like an index. And suppose you add any new key, like then it may be inserted at any position. Um, similarly, you can delete a key by the del <coughs> command and you can clear hold the um, dictionary by clear. Now if you want to see all the keys then d dot keys is the function. All the values can be seen by d dot values and each element is an item. So you can see all the items by d dot item. Okay. Now functions, um, you can also declare functions like any other language. So the syntax is def, def is the define, short form of define, then def, then function name and in the brackets you write the arguments. Then indentation is required, I mean one tab or one white space you have to give to show that it is inside that function. Then write the code and return statement is required so that it will know that the function is, it is returning after that um, statement to the caller. Okay. And yeah, uh, so as new block is starting, so you have to give a colon after the function name in argument. Now, um, as in uh, C language, you have to write a function prototype in the starting of the file. So in Python, it's not needed. So you can just define the function and call it. So as we have seen that, just we we directly write the variable and assign it. So it is it using it is using dynamic typing. And yeah, of course you must be knowing that we can't concatenate two different data types, string and integer. Okay, so it is a simple function. It has two arguments. The function name is my fun. X and Y are the arguments. So uh, we have re def uh, defined the function as return X star Y. Now the function is called similarly in, as in other languages that is the function name and in bracket the arguments okay so it will return the value and if you have not written any return statement then by default it will return none so none is like null in c language and it is equivalent to false And also, um, like the, the prototype of function is not important in the Python, only the function name is important. So you can't have any other function named my fun and having some other different number of arguments or different type of argument because type is not matter in Python language and number of arguments doesn't matter either. So function overloading is not supported in Python. Operator overloading is supported because the data type um, changes of each variable. Okay. Now I have written two functions here. First is my fun and the applier. Now the applier is returning q bracket x. It is returning a function. So the argument can be any function also. It may return a function also. So now like if I call the applier function the q argument has to be a function name which you have defined so here it will be it is my fun suppose comma 7 
So now if I call this function apply, what will happen? Uh, ideally, the the code which is written inside the parenthesis should execute first because it is it has high preference. But here the function applier will be called first because we are calling the function applier. My fun is just an it is just like other variable like an object which is referencing to some code. So my fun won't be called first, applier will call and then my fun of 7 will be called and then the result 21 will be returned. So again we have true and false as a logical expression. Comparison operator like uh, C only double equal to not and less than less than equal to. Okay. So this is also same like C A and B. So both should be true. Either of them should be true in case of or and not is the if it is true then false vice versa. Okay. Yeah, in case of complex Boolean expression you need to write parenthesis. Now um, like if a complex expression is there x and y and z then um, if all are true then it will return of course the value uh, of z okay and otherwise it will return the value of first false sub expression so it returned zero so how because uh, first one value is false so it will return the first of course the false expression is only z so but if in case it was y then uh, it would have returned the value of y which would be same again okay so it uses uh, this means to say that it uses lazy evaluation the first value which returns false it will return that it won't evaluate further the conditional expression which we saw in C is like using AND and OR together. So we will go to um, the control flow statements, if, while and assert statements. Okay. As we have seen the if statement, if and then condition, colon and then indentation. Now in case uh, instead of else if there is ELIF, so it is L else if. And again, there is a else statement as same as C. And in while loop, uh, it is also similar like C. You assign a value, then while and some condition, colon, and then give a indentation and the print statement. Break statement is there to break the loop and continue. We'll go to the next iteration. Okay. Now assert function is there which can check if the condition is true or not. So if it is false then the whole program will stop. So like assert can be used to stop a program if the condition is not um, sat satisfied. Um, similarly for the for loops. Uh, now, we can use the list data type very effectively while writing the for, uh, for, uh, for loop. Example, if we take, suppose I declare a list here. Now, I can just write this okay so it will um, the x value it is like iteration and the x will take each value which is present in the list so first it will take one so on till x and will print the value of x You can also use some range here if you want 
how many times you have to iterate the loop, then range and some value you can write. So, it will iterate for 5 times. <coughs> So, previously when we saw in it was used for checking if a condition if an element is present in the list or tuple or not. Now, here it is used for assigning the value and iteration and suppose if the val uh, variable which is used here is a string then it will iterate for each character and whatever variable you have written will take each character value from the string wherein you have to process each character of the string and find something substring etcetera. Okay. And also if you have a um, tuple uh, or a list then you can directly match if a tuple is present here or not. Like if I would have given here. Okay, so it, it will print each tuple. So normally you would have assigned it manually. So Python does the job directly. Uh, as I explained, the range variable is there if you want to iterate the loop particular number of times. So if you have written um, five, then it will. Um, take from 0 to 4, 5 would not be included. Okay. Some other functions are there like a uh, lambda function is there. So, um, you have any queries till now? Some of you might be actually, you can try using Python language for writing um, some mathematical programs etcetera. It is very flexible and easy to write here. Um, so, default value you can assign like while defining a function you can also put default values c equal to 3. So, if you do not put uh, give the argument it will by default take 3. It would not give error that it should have 3 arguments. Yeah, also um, while calling the function, you can use the variable and assign it and as pass it as uh, that way. It works in C also. And multiple assignment, as we saw that x comma y equal to 2 comma 3, then it will take the first variable to the first value. Similar is the case for the tuple type or the list data type, that it will match each element um, in the order which, which we have specified, like x will be matched to 2, if the uh, also the, the element type should match, like first is integer, it can be like integer or anything, but if you have specified it as a tuple and you do not have your uh, as a uh, tuple for uh, anything, then it will give error and that tuple should also contain two elements. Yeah, an empty list and empty tuples and empty dictionary can be created. Because suppose um, where it can be used the empty containers, uh, suppose you are writing a program, 
and you are adding something you are calculating the values of a list and you are adding um, it you want to con um, collect all the values as a list all the values which you have generated now if you directly append it then it will give an error that that list doesn't exist so you should assign create a empty list before same um, the string operations there are upper which will convert to upper case uh, there is a strip function which will uh, strip off all the new lines. Okay, the percentage operator which we use in C language, the person D, person S, etc., for string and integer. So that can be used um, here also. And also like to avoid the new line you can give comma. Okay. If you want to join some list, um, you have a li uh, list and you, have to jo you want to join the list as a string, then there is a join function which will uh, you have to specify by which character you have to join each uh, element. And similarly you can split directly uh, on some particular character. It is very helpful if you like have a log file and you want to separate it, you want to find each every different column, then you can just give a tab or a new line and then split the whole file. And str function um, converts any integer or float into a string variable, so that you can concatenate Okay. So, if you want to import any uh, header file in Python, there is an import command okay. and you can write your own files and or classes or functions and you can just import that particular function from uh, in your own file. Okay. Like if you have written some uh, Python file. We will see example. Yeah, like we have written this a.py file. I will create one more file. So, you have to like the file name is a.py. We will write here import A. So, when you write it, everything gets imported, all the variables or functions. Okay. And suppose we write a function here. So, I missed, uh, I should write a dot my func here. Okay. okay, so it will print the value which is written. So, do not forget to write the file name and dot that variable.
Okay. Now, so, uh, sometimes you may, might not, uh, if you have a very big file and many classes, many functions, you won't, don't want to import everything, then you just write um, from um, that file name, uh, only import some, uh, some module, uh, some particular function. like um, from uh, the a dot file uh, a dot py from a import the class name or some function my func okay there is um, built in modules also like sys module and os module so os module you can uh, traverse the directory paths and uh, you can access all the directories and files in the os module uh, sys is used for like command line arguments uh, for accessing the command line arguments, you have to import sys uh, module. Uh, then math module is there, which math functions you can use, then random. And as I specified, you can include your own code files. Okay. So, one example of uh, if we use the sys module. Um, we can add uh, like a path, sys.path is a variable. You can uh, specify which path you want, like you, uh, pwt, you can get the uh, current uh, directory. So, if you want to set uh, something to your current directory, just use sys.path and some path name as a string. Okay. So, how to define classes in um, Python? Um, a string or uh, everything in Python is object only. So, a class how to define it? <coughs> class, then class name, then um, all the methods or variables in the class should be again uh, intended by one um, space or tab <coughs> something. Then um, again, you can define some functions or variables in class. So by def, by normal function declaration, and there is a by default function underscore underscore init underscore underscore. So this is a default constructor which will be called uh, if you uh, create any object of that class. So like if you create any object of the uh, student class, this uh, this is a student class. So, you have to just write um, when you create any object in uh, class name and in bracket the arguments which you have to give to the default constructor and equal to whatever object name it is. Okay. And yeah, like in um, Java, we have this um, variable which refers to the self object. Uh, in Python, there is a self uh, keyword for the same purpose. Yeah, like um, if any object is there and you want to assign a value to its variable, then you can just define a function and write self dot the variable name equal to the value. Okay, and um, whenever the variable is object is not used, or uh, then it will be automatically deleted by the garbage collection. You don't have to write free or delete statement. Yeah, and. Um, any object name dot the variable name or function, uh, this is the way we can access it. And sometimes the problem is the attribute name or the method, the name of it, is, um, the va variable is not known at the runtime. So, what you can do, just write get argument, get attribute is a function. You can write the object name, comma, the name of the um, value, value you can, you want to access, okay. Because the object um, you might not know, like if you created a f object here, then you can access the uh, full name variable. Instead of writing f dot full name, you can also access this way, and you can check first of all if that argument is present or not by has attr. Now files. So for opening a file, open command is there. Just open and the file name you have to write. 
and a file pointer will be assigned. Then to read the file, there are two functions read or read lines. Okay. So, we will use read line functions suppose for x in p dot read lines. So, suppose the file contains many lines. So, what x will do now? It will take value of each line, line by line okay. and then you can process each line uh, if you want to do any operation like if you want to split the words by space etcetera. Then just close the file by the close command. So, it will save all the changes. Then um, you just want to kill the time by delay by delaying then there is a pass uh, keyword. So, it is like no operation in assembly code. Okay. There is actually lot more to study about in python. So, like I specified file operations there are many things also regular expressions are there in python. So, just uh, study what it depends on the libraries which you are importing. So, the more libraries uh, you are importing the more kind of functions you can use.